As Queen Elizabeth II has been in power for the longest period of time, she has witnessed quite a few significant historical events since her birth 95 years ago. Elizabeth has been present for close to a century's worth of historical turning points, from the 1929 Wall Street crash to the discovery of the first supermassive black hole. Here are 10 significant events that have taken place over the course of Queen Elizabeth II's life. Number 10. Queen Elizabeth II's coronation took place on June 2, 1953 in Westminster Abbey. It was the first to ever be televised and was viewed by 27 million people in the UK and millions more around the world. Millions of people gathered around recently purchased televisions in 1953 to see Queen Elizabeth II's coronation. There were a lot of people in homes, bars, and community centers, all of whom had their attention glued on the television set's blurry black and white images. John Logie Baird had proven the practicality of several different kinds of televisions in the late 1920s. When testing with broadcasting in 1929, the BBC employed Baird's 30-line system. This was also the system used for the 1932 introduction of the television service. In the years following 1945, as the coronation approached, the BBC accelerated the rollout of television transmission across the UK. The big event was quickly seized upon by television makers, who saw it as a perfect opportunity to advertise their wares. British viewers purchased more sets in the two months before the coronation than during any other comparable time period. The number of televisions installed by the time of the coronation broadcast was estimated to be 2.5 million. The logistical challenges were significant because the event was at the time the biggest outdoor broadcast ever produced. With 8,251 heads of state and other notable guests present, fitting the enormous, heavy television cameras into Westminster Abbey was a feat in and of itself. Number 9. Decolonization The decolonization of the British Empire has no set date although it was one of the 20th century's most important issues and affected the Queen's position around the world. Decolonization is the process of ending colonialism, which is the means through which a country develops and retains its dominance over other areas, frequently overseas territories. The idea is especially relevant to the global colonial empires that were built before World War I that were being dismantled in the second half of the 20th century. More than 20 nations declared their independence from Britain in the 1960s and 1970s. During her reign, the Queen's position has changed from that of head of state for hundreds of millions of people to that of head of the Commonwealth of Nations, which includes the majority of the UK's former colonies. Number 8. The Beatlemania, 1960s Rock and Roll, The Teenager, and of course those four charming Liverpool lads all burst into the limelight in the 1960s. Because of the Beatles' renown, there were debates in Parliament over whether police forces were adequately safeguarded in case they were ensnared in the delirious mobs that trailed them around the nation. Only 15 people showed up for the Beatles' debut gig, which Scottish music organizer Andy Lothian booked in the chilly January of 1963. They had achieved a number one album and three number one singles by the time he took them back north of the border to Glasgow Odeon on October 5th, and it was as if a hurricane had just blown into town. Even though Lothian's bouncers were still in the pub, anxious local police requested Lothian bring the Beatles on early to appease rowdily expectant fans, almost ruining the evening. The girls were beginning to overwhelm us, remembers Lothian, now 73 and a business consultant. I saw one of them almost getting to Ringo's drum kit, and then I saw 40 drunk bouncers tearing down the aisles. It was like the relief of Math King. It was absolute pandemonium. Girls fainting, screaming, wet sets. The whole hall went into some kind of state, almost like collective hypnotism. I'd never seen anything like it. A Radio Scotland reporter turned to Lothium and gasped, For gosh sakes, Andy, what's happening? Thinking on his feet, the prompter replied, don't worry, it's only Beatlemania. Typically, a Daily Mirror article on the Beatles show at the London Palladium eight days later is given credit for the phrase, but Lothian says it was actually him. Regardless, the phenomenon existed before the term. Teenage ladies were said to be yelling, sobbing, passing out, and pursuing the band down the street throughout 1963. Police escorts were always necessary. 
but in the media, new, snappy words have a magical power. Once it became popular, it appeared to permanently imprint the phenomenon in people's minds. Oh yeah, tell you something, I think you'll understand. Number 7. 1969, Man Walks on the Moon Apollo 11 launched on Wednesday, the 16th of July, 1969, from the American Kennedy Space Center in Florida, with the objective of landing safely on the moon. The astronauts tasked with completing the mission were Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Command Module Pilot Michael Collins. The men had all undertaken space missions previously. Before the spacecraft could enter lunar orbit, it had to travel for three days. The Apollo spacecraft was made up of three parts, an Eagle lunar module with two stages, one for landing on the moon and the other for returning humans to lunar orbit, a Columbia command module, which was the only one to make it back to Earth. Eleven minutes after the spacecraft slid behind the moon and out of contact with control for the first time since leaving Earth's orbit on Wednesday, the move was fraught with danger. The crew characterized the maneuver as, like perfect, noting that the craft could have missed the moon or entered an unstable orbit. The Queen delivered a telegram after Apollo 11 successfully accomplished the first manned lunar landing. On behalf of the British people, I salute the skill and courage which has brought man to the moon. May this endeavor increase the knowledge and well-being of mankind. Number 6. The European Union, 1973 the United Kingdom joined the European Economic Community as a full member during the Edward Health Administration. Prime Minister Health believed that the UK would be able to be more efficient and more competitive in gaining more markets, not only in Europe, but in the rest of the world. 1973 saw the quiet entry of Britain into Europe without any notable festivities. The majority of people assumed that the day would be recorded in history books for as long as histories of Britain are written. However, it would be years before people understood how important the incident was. The EEC was dubbed a free association of nations, joined together by a common purpose to bury the sword by the Daily Mail. The UK, along with Denmark and Ireland, joined the founding members West Germany, Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and the rest of Europe on January 1, 1973. Number 5. The Fall of the Berlin Wall, 1989 On November 9, 1989, protesters tore down the Berlin Wall that divided East Germany and West Germany after a five-day demonstration against the unfair division. The wall came down in the midst of a wave of upheavals that nearly brought down the Soviet-led communist bloc and, in part, because of a bureaucratic mistake, contributed to the creation of a new world order. The Berlin Wall, which separated communist East Germany from West Germany, came down on November 9, 1989, five days after 500,000 people demonstrated in East Berlin. By easing border patrols and facilitating travel for East Germans, East German leaders attempted to quell escalating demonstrations. They did not aim to fully open the border. Although the modifications were intended to be very minimal, the manner in which they were implemented had significant effects. Notes about new rules were handed to a spokesman, Gunter Schabowski, who had no time to read them before his press conference. Reporters were astounded when he read the first note out loud. Private travel outside the country can now be applied for without prerequisites, he said. Surprised journalists clamored for more details. In actuality, information about applying for a visa was to be the first thing covered the following day. However, the news was broadcast non-stop on television, and large numbers of East Germans hurried to the border. In 2009, Harald Jaeger, a border officer on duty that evening, recalled watching the press conference in confusion before watching the mob gather. Mr. Jaeger desperately tried to contact his superiors, but neither they nor he were given any orders to open the gate or begin firing to scatter the crowd. With only a few guards there, force would not have worked against hundreds of angry people. People could have been injured or killed without shots being fired in scuffles 
or if there had been panic among the thousands gathered at the border crossing, he told Der Spiegel, That's why I gave my people the order, open the barrier. Thousands passed through crying and cheering in scenes broadcast to the entire world. Numerous people scaled the wall at Berlin's Brandenburg Gate and used hammers and pickaxes to break up the barricade. When the wall was finally taken down in 1991, it signaled the end of the Soviet Union and the fall of the Iron Curtain. Number 4. The World Wide Web, 1989 A concept for the future World Wide Web was distributed by British computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. Berners-Lee recognized the potential of his creation and set out to make it available to everyone in the world after it was initially developed as a CERN communication system. The web was initially designed and developed to satisfy the need for automated information sharing among scientists in universities and institutes around the world. Robert Kaliau, a Belgian systems engineer, formalized this as a management proposal in November 1990. The main ideas and key terms behind the web were presented in this proposal. The document envisioned a hypertext project dubbed World Wide Web in which browsers could see a web of hypertext documents. Tim Berners-Lee demonstrated his concepts by having the first web server and browser operational at CERN by the year's end in 1990. On a Next computer, he wrote the code for his web server. The computer had the following handwritten label in red ink to prevent it from being unintentionally turned off. This machine is a server. Do not power it down. Fortunately, Tim's suspicion proved to be accurate and today anyone anywhere in the world can instantly access a vast array of knowledge-based resources. Consider the impact this has had on billions of people, from reuniting with long-lost family members via social media, to learning about political movements that are transforming the world, or even just relaxing with Netflix on a Sunday. Number 3. Anibis Horribilis The Queen enjoyed great popularity over the first few decades of her rule, and, despite a few royal and political scandals, avoided facing serious challenges. Consider every classic incident you are aware of surrounding the House of Windsor, such as the lustful phone calls between Charles and Camilla, Diana's suffering, and Sarah Ferguson's toe-sucking scandal. Everything took place in one terrible year. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure the Queen rasped on the day of her royal jubilee before clearing her throat. In the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be Annus Horribilis. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> In the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an Annus Horribilis. It was supposed to be a day of triumph, to mark Queen Elizabeth II's 40 years on the throne. Instead, the head of state uttered the Latin phrase, which means horrible year. Prince Andrew first declared his plan to divorce his wife, Sarah Ferguson. Soon, tabloids were covered in paparazzi pictures of the Duchess's new lover licking her feet. Princess Anne, the sole child of the monarch, later ended her nearly 20-year marriage. By the 1990s, divorce was far from taboo but the nation had been given a contentious diet of royal fairy tales, and no union was sweeter than that of Charles and Diana, the future king and queen. Although there had long been rumors in the tabloids about the marriage, Diana shockingly confirmed them in a scathing tell-all by Andrew Morton. Diana revealed that the world's perception of the fairy tale was untrue in secret audio recordings that a friend stole from Kensington Palace. The biggest threat to her reign came from within her own family, for a woman who had presided over wars, political crises, civil unrest, and more prime ministers than she could count on two hands. Number 2. September 11th Attacks, 2001 Nineteen terrorists from the Islamic extremist organization Al-Qaeda hijacked four commercial airplanes on the morning of September 11th, 2001, and two of them were used to destroy the North and South Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City. In Arlington, Virginia, the Pentagon was struck by a third plane. Flight 93, the fourth hijacked plane, was fought back by its passengers after learning about the other attacks, and the aircraft crashed into a field in western Pennsylvania about 20 minutes' flight from Washington, D.C. Due to the damage from the collisions and the following flames, 
the Twin Towers eventually fell. Nearly 3,000 victims from 93 different nations were slaughtered. The World Trade Center assaults were responsible for the majority of the fatalities. 40 passengers on Flight 93 were slain, and 184 civilians and servicemen perished at the Pentagon. Since the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, it was the worst strike to occur on American territory. Operation Enduring Freedom was launched by American and British bombing raids against Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces in Afghanistan on October 7, 2001, when the Taliban refused to hand over Osama bin Laden, the attack's mastermind. Al-Qaeda was severely damaged, and the Taliban were initially driven from power. But coalition troops had to contend with a persistent insurgency by the Taliban, the reconstruction of the infrastructure, and corruption in the Afghan National Army, Afghan National Police, and Afghan Border Police. Bin Laden would remain hidden for over 10 years. The Queen honored Americans who were working and living in Britain as well as individuals who had been personally impacted by the attacks in the wake of the 2001 attacks in the United States. For the first time in history, the Queen gave permission for the military band outside Buckingham Palace to play the American national anthem for the assembled crowds during the changing of the guard. She then went to St. Paul's Cathedral to attend a memorial service for the victims and injured. Number 1. Her Ireland Visit The Queen paid a historic state visit to the Republic of Ireland in May 2011. When George V paid a visit to the Republic of Ireland during his coronation year in 1911, the entire island was still a part of the UK, and it was the first time a British monarch had done so in 100 years. Elizabeth has traveled widely during her reign as part of her royal duties, and the monarch has happy memories of a trip to Ireland that she took over 10 years ago at the invitation of the country's former president, Mary MacAleese. Elizabeth and Philip spent three days in Dublin and Kildare in May 2011, just one month after her grandson Prince William married Kate Middleton. On their final day in Ireland, they then traveled to Cashel, Co Tipperary, and Cork City. Many people see the royal family as a representation of British imperialism, and the British royals have had a tangled history with Ireland. The visit was viewed as being extremely symbolic for mending old scars, particularly in the wake of the Good Friday Agreement of 1998 and the end of the Northern Irish Troubles. During the tour, she delivered a highly lauded address at Dublin Castle, where she briefly spoke in the Irish language, which was once outlawed by the British. This year marks 10 years since my visit to Ireland, which I remember fondly, and marks a significant centenary across these islands, she wrote. We share ties of family, friendship, and affection, the foundation of our partnership that remains as important today as 10 years ago. Many people have referred to the Queen's trip to Ireland with Prince Philip as her best ever state visit, which strengthened relations with Ireland even more. From the assassination of US President John F. Kennedy to the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns, Queen Elizabeth II presided over some of the most significant international events in the course of her historic 70-year reign. We pay homage to and appreciate the 96-year-old strong woman in the year that the Queen celebrated her Platinum Jubilee, the first commemoration of its type in the 1,000-year history of the British monarchy. We hope she continues to live a lovely and long life and that we can continue to share unique experiences with her. What do you think about this? Are you a fan of the Queen as well? Can you think of any other noteworthy occurrences from Queen Elizabeth's reign? Please tell us in the comments section below. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up share the video, and subscribe to our channel. We keep coming up with interesting videos like this, so make sure you hit the bell icon below to never miss anything from us.